This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, how can I create an IMM curve braid brush? So to start off, I just have ZBrush Startup, and I just have a polysphere loaded in here. And the question is asking about how to create a IMM brush that is a braid. So making a piece of geometry that looks like a braid for, say, hairstyles or rope, and then convert it to a curve brush so you can apply it to your model. So the first thing I want to do is go over to the tool palette over here, and I'm just going to click on this PolyMesh 3D star here, and then click again to open up the Quick Pick menu here. And then in here, I'm going to select the Cylinder 3D object. So select that primitive there. I'm going to turn on my polyframes, and then I'm going to open up my Initialize tab here. So for this process here, I'm just going to go through and model a quick braid shape and then set it up for an IMM brush. So I'm going to create a simple shape here out of the cylinder, and then I'm going to duplicate that a few times to create my braid that I'll then will repeat with an IMM curve brush. So in the initialize panel here, first I want to set this V divide, so I have 12 divisions through here. So I need 12 of these, so I want 12 different segments. So in the V divide area here, I'm going to type in the number 15 and hit enter. And that should give me 12 of these. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. And then I want to change my H divides too. So right now I have a 32-sided cylinder. I'm going to come over here and set this to 8. And now I should have a 8-sided cylinder. And after I have it set up like this, I'm just going to the top of the tool palette here, and I'm just going to click Make Poly Mesh 3D. So now I have taken that primitive of that cylinder there, and I've converted it to a poly mesh. Next thing I'm going to do is switch to the Move Transpose line. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, and I'm going to select one of the vertices at the bottom here, and click and drag vertically, and hold out and shift. Get my transpose to extend out like this. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to click and drag this outer circle here and just extend this. So I'm just looking to get a cylinder here that's a little bit longer. And I'm trying to get the topology here to be roughly squares. So something like this. Now it doesn't have to be exact squares because we will modify this a little bit later. So now I've just gone through the process of taking that cylinder. I've then initialized it in that initialized panel. And then I've now just stretched it out so it's elongated. So the next thing I want to do is I need to add some bended areas to the shape here. So I'm just going to mask out some of the parts of this and then just move them off to the side. So I'm going to count down two divisions here. And then at this division, I'm going to mask. And then I'm going to do three divisions from the bottom. So one, two, and three, and then mask this area. So now I have this line of geometry masked and this line of geometry masked. So two from the top and three from the bottom. Now I'm going to invert that mask, so I'm going to hold Control and click off of the canvas here in a blank spot. That will flip my mask. Then I'm going to switch back to the Move Transpose line. I'm going to click and drag on a vertice and drag it out horizontally while holding Shift. And then I'm going to grab the middle circle of the transpose line here and click and drag while holding Shift again. I'm just going to distort these some, so I'm looking to get a shape like this. So I just want to get those pieces offset, and this is going to generate that curve for the braid shape so they can intertwine together correctly. Then I'm going to clear my mask by just holding control and clicking off. And then I'm going to switch back to the draw mode here. I'm now going to select the Z modeler brush. So I'm going to hit B on my keyboard. I'm going to isolate by letter Z. And then I'm going to press M. And now I should have the Z modeler brush selected. I'm going to hover over a few of these edges here. So this edge here. I'm going to hold down Alt and then click, which is going to remove that edge. And I'm going to remove that second edge is at the top there, and then remove this edge here, and then this edge here, and this edge here. So now I have a wide area of topology, a short area, wide area, short area, wide area, short area, wide area, and a short area. And if you took the shape and repeated it vertically, it would match. So you have the same connection point up here, and it would repeat this braid pattern. And I'm just going to elongate this just a little bit more. So I'm going to switch to the move brush here, zoom out a little bit. And then I'm going to click and drag from the bottom here, holding shift to drag a new transpose line up. And then I'm going to grab this inner circle and hold shift just to extend that up a little bit. So getting my braid a little bit elongated. And so now I should have something like this. Now I just want to rotate to the side. So I'm just going to rotate my model and hold down shift. Now I'll lock it into a position like so. And I'm going to switch back to the draw mode here. 
And I'm just going to mask out a few more points. So I want to mask each area right after the long section of geometry. So I want to mask this line, this line, this line, and this line. So I'm just going to hold control and drag out and apply one mask, control and drag out second mask, control and drag out third mask, and control and drag out fourth mask. Now I want to invert the mask, so holding control and clicking off the canvas, that should flip that. I'm going to switch back to the move transpose line, draw out another transpose line again, so clicking and dragging, holding shift. I'm going to grab the middle circle and then position it like so, and this is now going to offset all those unmasked points, and I now should get this stair step like function. So you can see now I'm generating this stair step effect on this area of the braid. And you can move this as much as needed. You can always come back and modify this later as well. So after that is complete, I'm going to go back to draw mode, I'm going to clear my mask, and now I want to go through and I want to add a edge loop in the middle of all these long parts here. So I removed these edge loops initially just to allow me to move these things a little bit easier and give me this nice straight edge on this part of the cylinder here. So now I just want to add those back in. So I'm going to hover over an edge loop here, press spacebar to go in the Z Modeler Edge Action menu. Make sure I have the Insert Action selected, and then I'm going to change my target to Multiple Edge Loops. And now I'm just going to click on one of these edge loops here and just drag. But I want to make sure I drag so only one loop is being established. And this is going to put that loop directly in the middle of those two outer edges. I'm going to repeat that process here, here, and here. And then I'm going to clear my any mask that's on my model. And I'm going to hit Control W just to give that entire piece a new polygroup. So now I've just made this single piece of geometry here. So I've taken that cylinder and modified it. This is what it looks like from one side, and then from the front, it looks like this. So now that I have this shape created, I can now move this, and it will generate the rest of the braid. So I'm going to switch back to the Move Transpose line here. I'm going to draw another transpose line out from the bottom, so clicking on a vertice, holding Shift, and dragging up. This is going to get it positioned like this. And now I want to duplicate this. So if you have a subtool that contains no subdivisions, you can use this process of being in transpose move mode, and then you can come across this middle circle here. And as you click on this circle, if you hold down control and then click, this is going to duplicate the mesh. So you can see here that unmasked part has now been duplicated. Now, while I'm doing this, I can hold down shift and this will lock it into that axis. And what I want to do is I want to extend this up to give me a gap in between. So you can see this is the original position, and I want to skip this area and I want to position it to here. So you can see now I'm getting this kind of braid twine effect on the mesh. And after I have this positioned, I want to now just repeat that one more time. So I'm going to press 1 on my keyboard. And this will repeat the last stroke that I just did, which was that copy or clone. So pressing 1 again will just repeat that. And this should now move that up again right above this spot here. So now you can see I have these all spaced evenly. And if I clear my mask now, you'll see now I'm getting this braid effect through here. So I'm going to go to the tool palette and go to the polygroup area here and open this up. And I'm going to click Auto Groups. And this is just going to assign a new polygroup to each of the geometry islands. So now I can see the clearly defined area of this braid. And I'm going to switch back to draw mode. So coming over here and clicking this. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. And I just want to trace one of these uh, groups here. So you can see I have this part here. So let's say it starts here. It's going to go like this. And then it's going to end right here. So I can trim off this part. Hold Control and Shift, drag that out, hold down Alt to trim that area. And as you can see, if I trace this one again, so I need to get to this part here, and this would give me a repeating pattern. So Control and Shift, drag out this box, hold down Alt, and then release, and now remove that part. And I now should have a tiling braid pattern here. So each of these end caps here should link up to the top. I can now delete the hidden geometry. So go to my tool palette here, open up the geometry tab. Go to Modify Topology, and now click Delete Hidden. And now I should have a clear braid part. Now I can unify this to the world if you want to do any more modifications to this. So I'm going to go to the Deformation Palette here, open this up. I'm going to click Unify, and then I'm going to click Frame. So that will just take that braid there. It's going to put it back in the middle of the world, and then frame it like so. I can now modify this a little bit more if needed. So it's looking a little bit wide on the sides here. So I'm going to switch to the Move Transpose line drag this out, and then click the end circle and hold shift just to scale that a little bit there. So now I have this part of the braid. So now that I've created the geometry for my braid, I just need to convert this into a insert mesh curve brush so I can now draw it out on a mesh. So to do this, you just need to position your model how you want it to draw out. So I'm just going to make sure I have it 
positioned like this. Then I'm gonna go to the brush palette up here and open this up and I'm gonna click create insert mesh. Now, since this file only has one subtool and I only wanna create a insert mesh with one single part, you can see that the insert multi-mesh is grayed out. So if I had multiple subtools or multiple braid versions, I could then create a brush with multiple parts. But for this braid here, since it's only one subtool, you can see that's grayed out, and so I just want to click Create Insert Mesh. And when I click this, it's going to take this model, and it's going to give me a new Insert Mesh brush. Just clicking that. You're going to get a little dialog. I'm just going to hit New to this, and you can see now I have a new Insert Mesh brush over here. So now I can go back up to my Tool Palette. I'm going to click on this Cylinder 3D object and open this up. I'm going to click the Sphere 3D object. I'm going to turn this into a Poly Mesh quick. And then now I'm going to make sure it has no subdivisions. So go to the Geometry tab, just make sure it has no subdivisions on it. And now I can take this Insert Mesh braid here that I just created, and I can draw it out. And you should get a result like this. So this is now a Insert Mesh brush, so I could draw it out multiple times on my mesh. Now I want to take this Insert Mesh brush, and I want to have it follow a curve. So I can make you know a braid of rope or a braid of hair. So I just need to turn this into a curve brush now. So with that insert mesh brush still selected, I'm going to come to the stroke palette up here, open this up. I'm going to open up the curve area here, and I'm going to activate curve mode. So now this has activated this curve process. Now if I draw this out with this brush that I created, it's not going to behave exactly what you're looking for. So drawing this out, you're going to get that curve, but when you release, you're going to get something like this. Now, if you run into this, it's probably related to any polygrouping that you have established on your mesh. So if I undo this here, and I go back to that stroke palette, and I turn off curve mode, and now draw this out as a normal insert mesh, and then come over here and activate polyframes, you can see that this mesh consists of three polygroups. So when I did that autogroup process to see how those strands were going in that braid, it established a polygroup for each of these strands. So by default, when you generate an insert mesh curve brush, if that curve brush has three polygroups, ZBrush is going to try to process this as a triparts brush. So this would be a brush like the zipper brush here. So this brush is a triparts brush, so it has a starting zipper and a ending zipper part, and then it just repeats the middle. And the process to create a brush like that uses polygrouping. So since this insert mesh part here has three polygroups, ZBrush is assuming that you want it to be a triparts brush. I don't want this to be a triparts brush, but since it has those three polygroups on it, when you draw it out with curve mode like this, you may end up getting a result like this, where it's thinking it is a triparts brush, and now it's giving you this effect. So to fix this, we just need to modify how this curve is being seen in the brush palette. So make sure you're in a stroke palette, you have curve mode active. Then go over the brush palette over here and open this up. Now we're going to locate the modifiers area here and open this up. And since this part had three polygroups, this button became active. So I'm going to disable this. And now if I draw this out again on the mesh here, I'm going to turn off my polyframes here and increase my draw size. You see now I'm going to get this effect. So now it's giving you more of the result you're looking for. So it's taking that insert mesh part and it's now duplicating it across this curve. Now you'll notice at this stage that it has not been welded, so I'm getting seams between each of those breakups. So to fix this, you can go back to the brush palette over here, open this up, and right next to that Try Parts button in the modifier area here, there is a Weld Point, so you want to enable that. You probably also want to enable the Stretch option. You probably want to increase your curve resolution to the maximum and also increase your bend angle to the maximum. So now that I have these set, if I come back to my curve and click on it, it should update with those properties. And now you can see I have all those holes are now welded together. And if I drag this out, I'm getting this effect. So I should be able to redraw this curve anywhere on my mesh. And as I draw it out, I'm going to get that IMM part following the curve. And now I can apply it to my model. Now there are a few more attributes you can change here just when you're establishing this on your mesh. One thing is the depth or where this is drawing out. So if I rotate the model here, you can see that, that the curve is following the surface of the model through this area. And you can see that the part here is sitting directly above that curve. So this effect is occurring because of the depth. So if I go to the brush palette here, open this up, and I open up the depth area. In here you have an embed value. And so right now this is set to 37. So at 37, the IMM part here that you have applied to this curve is going to sit directly on top of the curve. If I change this to, say, 0, and now draw this curve out, 
this is going to sit directly in the middle of the curve. So as you can see here, this part is now in the middle of the curve here, and you see it's going into the surface of the model. So if I wanted this to expand off the surface and go back to that brush menu over here, I can change the embed value to a higher number. So let's go to 100 and now drag this on the surface there. And now you can see that this curve is floating on top of the surface. So if you want your part to embed into the mesh, you can control that by going to the depth palette underneath the brush menu over here and just changing this embed value. Now after you have the curve drawn out, you can also apply this to the mesh. And to do this, you just need to snapshot that curve. So the button to control this lives in the stroke palette here. And if you open up the curve functions area, in here you have a snapshot. This is also hotkeyed to the number five. So if you press five on your keyboard, it's going to lock that curve in and it's gonna allow you to draw another one. And then you can press five, lock that one in, draw another one, press five and you can just keep drawing curves out across your mesh. Now, if you don't press five, you're gonna be able to modify the curve. So if I can come across the curve here and I can modify this after I draw it out and you can even extend it. So if you move your mouse near one of the endpoints of the curve, you're gonna get this little red line and this is gonna allow you to extend the last curve you drew. So you can see I can extend that out. And then, so that will allow you to modify that a little bit after you have it drawn out. And then once you're happy with it, you can press five and then draw out another one. So that is the process of creating a simple braid brush. Now, if you wanna modify the shape of your braid in any way, you can always go back to your original mesh, which was this part here, and you can modify this. And then you can go back to the brush palette and create a new insert mesh brush, and then reapply those settings, and you can keep changing the brush as needed. So if you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.